together, we are going to create a giant school poster of all of our images. And to do that, we have to edit a few things. So you're going to take the image that you've made either with the desktop computer or one that you've chosen from your phone and insert it into a Word document. There are a few ways to do that. Copy and paste is a classic move. I appreciate that. Or you can go down to your insert tab to photos and a picture from file. Now I'm going to go and search for my poster photos that I took. And the first one, yeah, that's a non-example right there. We're not going to use that photo, even though the first photo and probably the third photo are more similar to how I might actually behave in real life. I want to do something that's going to have a positive attitude or at least be a straight face, nothing silly. Um, and then we're going to insert that photo. Sometimes that photo is going to be too wide or too light or too dark. So we are going to have to do some edits to this photo actually inside of a Word document. This is an alternative to Photoshop. So the first thing that I'm going to do when this photo is highlighted, you'll have a number of format picture options that can also be accessed with a right click where you can go down to format picture and also access these same tools. So I know that your page is going to look slightly different but we can still access the crop tool and we'll want to make our photos a uh, portrait view and not a landscape. So making sure that it is uh, formulated properly. And then we will drag it until it is at five inches wide at the very least so that it fits nicely onto our poster board. From there, while the photo is still highlighted, we're going to go to recolor and put it into black and white, which is the very top left option. So you're going to put your photo in black and white. And then we're going to apply a filter, which is the next button over. And we're going to go two over and two down. This is called paint strokes. So please make sure that the filter option you're choosing is paint strokes. This will effectively posterize the image for us. Certainly, um, this is a bit dark. So you can go back into um, corrections and also filter options and go down to artistic filter options and alter some of the paint strokes information. You can maximize the intensity. You can also alter the transparency so that we're having multiple layers of color basically is what we're trying to do. So I'm trying to change out the number of colors that are available in my picture and make it maybe only four or five for me to actually paint. Okay. So once I've gotten it to the density and transparency that I would like, that's okay. Here's the trick. You do not want to save this as a Word file. What you're going to do is to right click and save this image as a separate picture. So I can just save it as picture of me. <laughs> and PNG is fine uh, or JPEG is also awesome. Um, and we can save that also to my desktop here. So let's save that. The reason why we're saving it as a picture is that we can go to Safari or Windows Explorer or Chrome or whatever you want to use and go to grid drawing tool dot com it pops up right there for me and this is a great website for you to use where you can use a grid which is just basically a reference tool for artists where they can kind of better draw images more realistically so let's start one I'm going to choose a file on my desktop picture of me that's me so I'll choose that and it'll insert it. From here, you can go to rotate, crop, or adjust those things, but those should have been things that we've done already in our Word document. Um, the only thing that I could see possibly doing would be changing the contrast or brightness of your photo. Um, but what you'll notice is that each time you change or press one of these things, it will actually take like a second to download a new photo. So once you get to the final and fifth step, which is the most important step, it's going to apply a grid to your picture. Personally, got to keep the boxes square. 
I appreciate either having a black or a white grid and making sure that my grid is only one pixel wide. That gives me more information to actually see in the photo. Uh, and what also helps is to have a denser grid that's more reference lines for you to actually use. So once we do apply that, eh, I think that's a bit intense. That's maybe too much. So maybe we can make our grid black or white, depending on how, uh, how much white or black is in your photo and how bright your photo is. Um, and then also, changing the number of boxes. You can see as I click those, it didn't change anything here. So I always have to press apply for that to actually change what's on the photo. And once that has applied, you can download that photo separately, and save it to your computer, print it out. Uh, we need at least two copies printed today and we will continue working on this in other classes. But for today, if you can make sure that you've gone through the steps of doing a fake posterization on your photo and uploading it to griddrawingtool.com to apply a grid uh, and, uh, and, then, uh, and then also to the library. Thank you so much.